I'm gonna give you the five best keys behind high performance nutrition, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from GarageStrength.com, and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you wanna be more explosive, you wanna get stronger, you wanna be healthier, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So for the last 10 years here at Garage Strength, we've trained athletes that have dominated in various different sports. We've trained athletes that have competed at the world level in swimming. We've trained athletes that have been a two-time world bronze medalist in wrestling. We've trained athletes that have played in the NFL. We've trained world bronze medalists in Olympic weightlifting. We've trained numerous NCAA All-Americans, countless state champions, all of these different athletes. And a lot of it has to do with how we've handled nutrition and how we work through different facets behind nutrition to try and lead to that high performance. And there's got to be a whole bunch of different factors that go into high performance nutrition. And we've got to think right off the bat, we've got to look at before we dive into this, we've got to think about nutrition as simple as it can be. We've got to think about it as calories in versus calories out. And if we can think, calories out would be anything along the lines that would be our basal metabolic rate. So this would be measured based off of, you're sitting at home and you're watching the NFL on a Sunday and you're just laying on the couch and you're not doing anything. You're just laying there and you're just taking it all in. So the basal metabolic rate would be how many calories do you need to utilize to essentially stay alive. And your body will be utilizing about 60% of your caloric consumption to continue to thrive through the basal metabolic rate. Then we're gonna get into non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this would be anything along the lines, like me standing here right now, waving my hands all over the place. That might be non-exercise activity thermogenesis. How many calories does this take? How many calories does my body take to utilize and move my hands? When I park my car, when I go to the grocery store, if I park my car further away, my non-exercise activity thermogenesis might be a little bit higher because I'm walking an extra 40 spaces to the grocery store and back. So these are gonna be things that lump into an action-based activity, but it's not going to be exercise activity. And that takes us into exercise activity. So now we're gonna have that exercise activity, okay? And exercise activity is, if I'm lifting weights, if I'm doing resistance training, if I'm uh, doing cardio, if I'm on the assault bike, if I'm on the Concept 2 rower, if I'm going for a, a jog, which I never do, if I go and run hill sprints, something along those lines, if I go for a swim, now that's exercise activity, and that can take place and we can have a lot of control over exercise activity. And then finally, we're going to have the thermic effect of food. So TEF, and TEF is going to be, when we consume something, how many calories does our body utilize to absorb, to digest that food? So it comes back to basal metabolic rate, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, exercise activity, and then the thermic effect of foods. And that's going to be our calories out. So then calories in is going to be everything that we're going to consume. So if we're talking about high performance athletes, if we're talking about individuals who are trying to get healthier, they're trying to lose weight, they're trying to feel better, they're trying to improve their quality of life, all of these things have to come into play and we have to think about all this stuff when we're planning out our nutritional program and our nutritional aspect. And this can be very, very overwhelming. And this is something that I struggled with for a very, very long time. And what ended up happening is that personally, I got to the point where I weighed upwards of 300 pounds. And for years, I was walking around at 290, 300 pounds, somewhere in that range. I wanted to be this big, monster walking around but what ended up happening is i looked like the dude from the goonies but i was walking around just scarfing down tons and tons of potato chips all the time drinking over a gallon and a half of milk every single day and i was 
huge. I was fat. I was really strong, but I was also really fat. I had digestion issues. I, I had just tons and tons of different problems. And then this all got exacerbated when I got diagnosed with Lyme disease and I figured out Lyme disease took about two years of my life where it was me trying to figure out how to get healthier, how to be happier and healthier. And that led to the development of these five key elements that go into high performance nutrition. So coming in at that number five spot, and I believe that all of these things are really, really important and they're, they're all sort of working synergistically, but we're gonna talk right off the bat about stress reduction. And the big key factor here is that stress reduction can really have a different meaning for your season of life. So now I've got four children and I own three businesses. So stress reduction for me is really about how can I spend more time with my kids? How can I get less annoyed by people? How can I try to handle all the different moving pieces as well as I possibly can? So that might mean for me going to therapy, meditating regularly, going for nice walks around my house and spending more time with my children that's going to reduce my stress. It's gonna make me feel better about where I am and it's going to make me feel better about who I am. So uh, if, if we're talking about somebody else who's an elite athlete, stress reduction might be get away from people that are sucking the life out of you. You know, like somebody who's taking advantage of you, somebody who's coming and complaining to you about every little detail incessantly bitching and griping over and over again. And then that leads to you having this negative view on life. And now all of a sudden you see stress as this, you can't get away from it. You see it in every single corner of your life because you're surrounded by other people who are negative and they're bringing that stress towards you. So when you can start to identify these things, now you can start to reduce your stress. You might partake in things like meditation or prayer or breath training. Uh, you might start to go for walks and spend time outside away from your cell phone, away from the TV, and you're reducing stress and you're honing in on what is most important to you and what's gonna make you happier so you're reducing that stress. And that's an incredibly important facet. It's an incredibly important element behind high performance nutrition. And that leads us right into the next aspect, which is gonna be mindfulness. And this, this is something that a lot of people struggle with early on with a diet. They immediately think we've gotta lose 30 pounds right away. But the long game is what matters. We've gotta look at high performance nutrition as a way of life, about living as healthy and as happily as possible for a very long, period of time. And so mindfulness is being aware of who you are and what makes you happy. And for me personally, what I like to do is actually establish those key performance indicators. So what are five things that make me happy? I love spending time with my wife and kids. I love having coffee. I love eating Indian food. I love lifting weights. Now we've got, I love coaching. That's five key performance indicators because that was what I acknowledge from this mindfulness, right? And so if we can be a little bit more aware of who we are, and then on top of that, now you're gonna be a little bit more in tune with your body. And when you're more in tune with your body, you start to notice different things about what's happening. You start to realize when you have specific cravings, you start to realize when you feel sluggish, you start to realize when you feel very energetic, you start to realize when you're feeling frustrated and down on yourself and you wanna go scarf down some more food, and then you realize that might not be the answer to making you happier. And so being mindful of your own personal presence factors into stress reduction. And in turn, these are huge key elements behind high performance nutrition. And that takes us right into that next key factor, which is gonna be nutrient dense foods. And so when we start to think about mindfulness, we start to be more aware of how we feel with different types of foods that we're consuming. And one of the big things for me personally was, maybe I shouldn't be drinking a gallon and a half of milk a day. <laughs> maybe, milk is very nutritious. Maybe I should only have about a half gallon and I'll probably be okay, right? And that's fine. And one of the things here too with nutrient dense foods is if we can start to think about it from a protein consumption basis. If we have, 100 grams of a grass-fed steak, 
we're getting an extremely nutritious piece of meat that's gonna help us throughout the day. It's gonna help us recover. And on top of that, we can go back to that thermic effect of food. When we're thinking about protein, about 25 to 30% of the calories that we're consuming are gonna be utilized to try and absorb the protein and digest the protein and then utilize it later on for recovery from whatever we're doing. And so utilizing nutrient dense foods goes a very long way. Now we start eating more fibrous foods like apples and bananas and we start consuming things like potatoes that have macrobiota accessible carbohydrates. And now we're starting to eat foods that really go a long way. They reduce our inflammatory stress from eating they also lead to us feeling more mindful about what has a positive and negative impact on our digestive system, what has a positive negative impact on our energy. And then what's crazy is when you become more mindful of what you like in life, and that's spending time with your family or your friends and eating food and preparing food and being more involved with your own nutrition, that leads to that nutrient dense foods. Now you're preparing a nice healthy meal for your children, for your wife, for your family coming up through the entire week. You're doing a good positive thing of meal prepping by engaging with nutrient dense foods. So this is that third key aspect and that leads us right into exercise, right? So now we have exercise factored in and that leads to that exercise activity and that's all part of this calories in versus calories out. Now that exercise activity plays a huge role. And again, exercise can reduce stress. Exercise can help with mindfulness. When we start to engage with exercise wholeheartedly and you start to think about what do I want to get out of this training session? Do I just want to go in and burn some calories or do I want to try to push myself mentally? Do I want to try and feel things I've never felt before? Whatever it is that you want to do, you're being more mindful while you're exercising, you're becoming more active while you're exercising. You're not as passive, you're putting out more energy. You're spending more time researching about exercise and figuring out what helps you feel better as an individual. And all of these things really start to come into play. And then you start to realize this key element can help you improve the cognitive ability of your brain. It can help you live longer. It can help you deal with stress. It can help you become a better person and it can help you engage with more nutrient dense foods because now we're eating foods that help us recover better from training. We start to notice when we're less sore or when we're more sore and we start to see a direct correlation between what we ate the night before and then how we feel the next morning. And we start to see all these things play out. And then finally, this exercise really factors into our sleep. And that would say, this is a key factor here is now we're getting into our sleep patterns. And we know that sleep plays a huge role on reducing stress. We also know that individuals who don't get good sleep tend to be people who might make poor decisions. They might go out and binge eat. We even know that there's research on doctors that have less sleep. They are much more likely to get into car accidents. We know that third shift workers make an incredibly higher amount of errors than their counterparts that are working first shift. And that's because sleep can help reduce stress. And if you're not getting enough sleep, then your brain is going to be out of whack. You're going to start to feel sluggish and you're going to start to have these cravings. And when you're not mindful and you're under a lot of stress, now all of a sudden you're just going to reach for whatever it is that you need at that moment. And then you start to get away from engaging with those nutrient dense foods and you start to feel lazy. You start to feel fatigued. You're not motivated. You don't want to go to the gym. You don't want to spend time bettering yourself. And it's this terrible, endless cycle if we're not ultimately engaging with proper sleep hygiene. So we need to make sure we're getting seven, eight, nine, ten hours of sleep. For me personally, if I get seven hours of sleep, I'm getting a nice sleep period of recovery. Even with four children with two twins at home, I can still feel good the next morning. And so all of these elements, these five key elements is exactly what we utilize inside our high performance nutrition program that's available at garagestrength.com. We put all of this stuff together and we try to make these things less frustrating. We try to make it more practical. We want to tell you not just the macros that you're eating, 
but the exact time that you're going to be eating them. We provide meal plans, we provide recipes for you to utilize, so the practicality is there. And there's multiple different options for breakfast, for lunch, for your snacks, for dinner, for post-workout nutrition, for sleep hygiene, sleep nutrition. All of these things are factored into that high-performance nutrition program that we have available you can click on the link down below and you can head over to garagetrank.com to pick that up but before you do that make sure that you have all of these elements in line make sure that you know how you can possibly reduce that stress you're going to therapy you're spending more time with your family you're talking to your significant other much more about what's going on you figure out those kpis that's going to make you more mindful about your happiness, you're engaging more with nutrient dense foods, you're spending time cooking, you're spending time with farmers and learning their different practices that they utilize to cultivate their crops or their animals, whatever it might be. You're engaging with more exercise and you're researching exercise, you're partaking in the process behind exercise and ultimately you're getting that better sleep so that you can come back and you can feel much better and you can perform at a very high level with whatever it is that you're doing so that you feel better, you can live longer, and you can be happier. So if you want more information about high performance nutrition, you can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up your custom nutrition program. If you want more information about nutrition in general, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.